Hey, what's up everyone? It's Casey the Carolina Thrifter coming at you with another video here on the YouTube channel. Guys, I know it's been probably two weeks since I gave out a video and only you'll see my videos on yard sales, thrifting. But today I'm gonna start at my house because I've been really busy. So I'm gonna show you what I got going on, kind of give you some tips and what I've been dealing with. So guys, right now it's Monday morning and this is what I got going on. I've already got packages pre-made from Sunday. I mean, I'm still, I'm still working on it too. I still got a package of all these and there's some other stuff scattered around that I gotta find still. But um, yeah, it's probably looking like 35, maybe 40 packages going out from Saturday and Sunday. There's a couple from today I've already sold. So trying to get all that out. I'm trying to do like 15, 20 listings a day. So you can see, I actually started out this little board here. I got this from Chris at the Old School Picker. He has like this thing called Momentum a uh, momentum Board. So I don't have it as detailed as he does. He'll put the dollar amount under here, but I just put how many listings I've been doing. I started this back, I think on the 7th. So you can see 5, 20, 10, 13, 10, 0, 20. But man, when you hit those 20 marks, for me at least, I started making a lot of really good sales. And then, you know, you got a lot of things that come in the way. Look, I did take a day off. I still got seven up, but 15 to 20 a day. You can see I've kind of dropped a little bit. You got 13s and 10s in here. But being consistent, I think, is probably the best thing to do. And the more consistently you can be, you know, listing on eBay, the more sales you can get. Whereas if you got good stuff to sell, it's going to sell anyway. Also, guys, I got some issues going on with packaging my golf clubs. So I thought I'd address that with y'all in this video. Like I said, I got some thrifting I'm going to do later on and show you, but I didn't really, I haven't really found a lot of good stuff out thrifting and garage selling. So, but I have had some issues shipping my golf club. So basically I'm getting broken shafts in the mail and I actually just got a negative feedback from one of them and that kind of sucks. So I'm gonna share with you the negative feedback here, as you can see. So the negative feedback states, package arrived damaged, very little packing when material was used to protect the club. The shaft was cracked and when I lifted it out of the box, it broke in two. I had to take it to Golf Galaxy to be reshafted. Planned this as a birthday present for my son, very disappointed. So yeah, that's what I'm dealing with. I mean, I actually reached out to the buyer and I tried to, you know, make amends with them. And I tried to like, you know, give them solutions. Like, you know, if it breaks in the mail, I normally try to do a UPS claim or I can, you know, have them if they want to do it, which they rarely ever want to do a UPS claim. They always want to ship back to the return. That's fine. You know, return it back to me. I will fix it. And then we got, and the other option is I'll do a partial refund. So but I don't think she wanted to do anything. She messaged me back, said, I am not packaging the golf clubs correctly. She can't believe that my golf clubs actually get to the destinations they're supposed to. But guys, I'm gonna show you how I do it and what I'm doing to improve. And y'all can leave in the comments below what you do if you ship golf clubs, how you package them. But I mean, I'm doing like anywhere from 10 to 20 a day. And I mean, I'm trying to keep it under around five minutes, five, at least five minutes per golf club packaging. And that starts from putting the golf club in the box, giving it some bubble wrap around the head, and then sometimes cutting the box down, printing out the shipping label, printing it the whole nine yards, five minutes. But here's what I'm doing now. All right, guys, I'm gonna start out with this golf club because this is the one that would probably more likely break in the mail. This is a RBZ TaylorMade Rocket Ball Z6 hybrid. This Ladies Flex Graphite shaft. So this, this shaft is very fragile on this one. So I'm gonna use this one. Guys, please excuse my mess in my room. I mean, when you're working and stuff, sometimes it's, I mean, I do try to do like a weekly cleanup, but. Anyway, got eBay tape. First thing I'm gonna do, get eBay tape, get a piece off, and then get me some bubble wrap. I usually try to get a decent amount of bubble wrap around the head here. So we'll start with the head. Bubble wrap the head up. Get that done. So now I know the head is pretty secure and tight. Next up, we're gonna grab a box. So I can either grab one of these. These are 36 four by four box. This is a 36 4x4 box. I can use this and do the Frankenstein effect on it, or I can use, or I can come over here and use one of my 48 4x4 boxes and cut it down. So I like to use both of these. You can get any one of these on Amazon. I got these for a dollar, they're like about a dollar 32 a piece, I think. So I'll, I'll try to leave the link in the description. I've had not, have not had the best luck of leaving the links in the descriptions for Amazon's, but anyway, I'll do my best. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna go with the 48 4x4. I'm gonna cut it down. So what I'll do is I'll take the golf club and I'll measure it to see how where I'm gonna need to cut it off at. So I'm gonna leave it like right here. So I need to cut that. So we get my get one of these here, a little heart razor blade, and we're gonna cut it right here. That gives me enough room. Cut that, cut that off, and I save these for the top box of the 36 4x4s. Yeah, so next up, so I got the box and basically you just cut the corners down give it this whole closing flaps. 
gonna have that ready to go but since the shafts are getting broke my new thing i'm doing is i'm just getting some bubble wrap i don't know man bubble wrap is getting real expensive lately i mean i can get it off amazon but this right here was like almost 30 bucks at staples i'm just because the cost of goods going up I and mean, gas went down you think cost of goods would go down it's just gonna stay at the same price but i need a good thick layer here and just wrap it around the shaft i'm either going on the wedges i'll put it up top but on this one here i'm gonna put it in the center give it some padding i really don't think this is going to help more, no more than anything else i mean it takes a few hundred pounds of pressure to snap a shaft but i'm gonna put my efforts in because i don't want any more negative feedback and though like not think i'm not trying to give it some effort so i think that works out great and i also want to put one more piece on the top so here we go I got this piece right up here. I mean, I'm using a lot of bubble wrap, but I mean, I'm just, I mean, I, I'd rather use a, so I'm using a lot of bubble wrap, but I'd rather use a lot of bubble wrap. So I make sure, I mean, this this six hybrid went out for, I think like $50. I'll tell you all the time, the higher hybrids go higher. This is a Taylor made rocket ball Z, you know, brand. I mean, this is a really good pro line golf club. Goes in the box, so it fits pretty decently in there. Still got a little space there. You want to create at least as less space as possible. I'm gonna put some more bubble wrap in here, I think. I might just tear off another piece. Put that in there. So that fit in there pretty good, pretty snug. I got another piece of bubble wrap that's gonna go on the top of that. But I mean, now we can close it down, tape it down, and should be good to go. I, mean, I don't see any other issues here. I mean, it should be good. Fast. Final thing I'm doing here to make sure these things get out of the door safely and I can gotta worry is, I don't know if this is helping, but I'm writing fragile. I am gonna get me some stickers. So I gotta write it, cause writing it takes like 20, 30 seconds if you're doing your time audits. But let's just write fragile on both sides. And there we go. I'll print the label off and hopefully it gets there safely. Y'all let me know in the comments below if you would desire to and let me know if you think that's a proper way of shipping a golf club. I ship at least I don't know 100 golf clubs a week and now i'm getting one out of 300 getting broke and i had a negative feedback from once all right we got to the ups store this is the next day this is not monday we just got a few going out today yesterday was crazy i had that whole back wall line up in there man look at all these people in here i appreciate it appreciate y'all i know i had a bunch yesterday in here I, yeah, just the right time, right? I did. Oh, really? That's good. That's good. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, guys. So in this part of the video, I'm gonna go thrifting. I have to do a voiceover because there is a lot of music playing in the background. So as you can see, normally I go to the golf clubs first, but these Kyrie Irvins here caught my eye. They want twelve ninety nine for them. I did end up grabbing them. There's some like Air Max over here. I forgot the exact sub model of those, but I did put them back. They were overpriced at twenty four ninety nine. I think is what they were cost. Picked up some Adidas right here. It's $12.99, way overpriced. I ended up did just bring them along with me because I did want to check the comps. There's also some uh, Gel Nusa 7s, I think that's what you call them, made by Asics. These are always pretty cool. I picked these and sold them up in the past, but I think they still want to like, I think $7.99. I ended up putting them back because there was some cosmetic wear on there. I know I did turn around here, and I did find a pair of Hoka's here later on. Oh, check these out. I did find a pair of Air Jordan Retro 1s. They won a $24.99. That model actually did not comp out that great. It's another pair of Nikes there with $12.99. It's hit or miss in the thrift store. You can find, you know, shoes anywhere from $12.99, $7.99, and there you go, $24.99. So it just depends on the luck of the day and where they're priced at, whether you're going to get a good deal. But yeah, I turn to the left here, and this is bright where I should have picked up the Hoka's, and they are for $3.99. Definitely picking that up. Passes my wear test that the bottoms don't look too bad, so should be able to flip those for a profit. But I go over both of those shoes that I picked up at when I do leave the thrift store. Uh, guys, I did make my way to the video game case here. There's Minecraft sitting up there, overpriced at $9.99. Do got Wii Sports here at $12.99. Both games are bolos, but with that kind of price, I'm definitely going to leave those there. So sometimes you will catch a deal in here, but right now I don't see anything worth picking up. All right, guys, that went terrible. I know I probably did a voiceover in there because there was a lot of music, but I'm going to tell you what I got. Got a pair of Hoka's. And these Hoka's, they in decent shape for $3.99. That's not bad. Hoka, I'll tell you, if I got okay tread on the bottom i know i can flip these for a profit at least 20 25 make a little bit and they do sell i mean that's 
this thing about this brand is it sells good and then we got these here these are in my size i'd keep them they i, I like these these are the Kyrie Irvin. i think they're like a usa hey i don't want to drop them but i mean they're in pretty decent shape 12.99 i don't see any flaws 12.99 is paying up a little bit for me but i think i can get at least 50 for these and if they were my size i'd keep them they're size 12s so solid size solid condition that's why i got these two pair you know for the you know trying to justify my purchases i don't like to spend you know like the other stuff that i put back the conditions the sole comps it's all got a lineup for me to buy shoes at this point but not too bad all right guys next up here we are at a goodwill and this is goodwill number one for me for today do kind of pop in check out the shoes i don't see anything really good in the shoe aisle right at this moment now guys the golf clubs are on the way to the shoes and that's where i do make my way and i do find a few good golf clubs in here there's some ping eye twos now ping eye two is a big bolo in golf you can find the sets sometimes the single irons paying 3.99 a club in goodwill i mean they're the regular single irons will only sell for anywhere from 15 maybe 20 bucks however i do find the sand wedge to the set and that's the one i'm holding right there that is a bolo anytime you find the wedges to the sets they're more valuable so i want to say that one's probably going to be worth probably around 20 to 25 dollars but yeah, a handful of ping out twos, nothing else good in there. So not too bad from just find a one golf club for $3.99. All right, guys. So after the golf club rack, I do kind of move around the store trying to look for like tennis rackets, baseball mitts, baseball bats. In this case, I find a glove. I want a two ninety nine, dollars a little bit of cosmetic wear. I did put it back. Did find a pair of KDs over here on the side. I think they were just a little overpriced for what I wanted to spend. I don't think the comps from those were around 30 or 40, and they wanted like anywhere from like 15 or 20. So I did pass on that. I did find another. I think these are KDs. I ended up putting these back. You know, they got sticker on the price or the price on the bottom. If they wasn't on the sticker wasn't on the bottom, they would be $6.99. So not scoring that today. And then I came over to the electronic section, thought I was getting the Xbox One remote, and unfortunately that is just a alarm clock. I did not comp that out. Who knows? It could have been worth something. All right, that's not terrible in there. We did get a ping out two black dot sandwich. Just about to get run over. So these things run about 25, 30 bucks. Definitely not leaving that behind. So not too bad. I think what we're gonna do now is so this that was the retail side. You got a, you got a good little bins over here. I'm gonna go check it out. But not too bad for one little golf club in there. All right, good little bins. Always exciting in here. All right, guys, as I entered the Google bins, I noticed one thing in here already. There's nothing but clothes. So in my Google bins, one thing you will notice in here when if you ever come shopping with me is we have clothes and shoes and purses. And fortunately, I did pick up one decent garment in here today. There's an L.L. Bean little denim long sleeve shirt. And I mean, you're paying about a pound. So I ended up paying like $1.80 for this thing. So and it was in really decent shape. So I did pick that up. I do go over in just a second, give you a soul comp. But that is it for the day in the bins. All right, guys, I mean not a big home run in the, in the bins the bins is not really a big thing i like to shop at unless there's a lot, like a lot of shoes in there the hard goods that was a lot of clothes but i did manage to snack an ll bean long sleeve denim and shirt and it does come anywhere from 25 to 30 bucks like i might have said earlier in the video it weighed about a pound this weighed 1.1 pound which cost me like a dollar 85. not too bad on a good roi and that's what the bins is for a good roi if you're looking for a cheap inventory to flip and build an ebay store so highly recommend a place like that if you're trying to build your ebay store up all right guys to wrap up the video here of thrifting i actually choose a pawn shop to go to you can really score some great deals in pawn shops for golf clubs now and then unfortunately this is not the day i'm going to score they want about 120 dollars for adam's idea set there in the back the golf club bag right there is overpriced i cannot tell what the price was at the moment here's a really cool ping zing putter i do know they wanted 90 dollars for that way overpriced for me on that one to make any money and i think you get that actually cheaper on ebay it's like a 50 dollar putter and then we got a ping pal four putter here that i think they want 40 dollars for still a little overpriced for what i wanted to pay but now and then you can score some good deals on you know something pawn shop there you go i am showing the price yes 120 bucks i mean that the iron set itself is probably worth around a a hundred bucks so anyway not scoring anything today in the pawn shop but it's taking a play out of the playbook of stack golf sometimes they go and find some great deals so i want to see if i could but fortunately not today all right guys so y'all have reached the end of the video i do appreciate everybody watching if you got this far i really do appreciate it if you do like the content that you saw today please don't forget to hit the like button 
And if you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button. I do try to bring at least one video a week. It's been at least two weeks, like I said, before I got a video in. But anyway, guys, it's a rainy day here in South Carolina. As you can see, I'm about to go into a Goodwill and hopefully find something good in there. So we'll see you on the next one. See you.